The World Bank Group introduced our new country climate and development reports 18 months ago, recognizing the need to align development and climate objectives at the country level. A little more than a year later, we now have enough reports published to see key lessons emerging. These lessons are summarized in a synthesis paper that we will be launching on November 3rd. And I would like to invite August and Stefan to tell us more about some of the main messages in the synthesis paper. A clear message coming out of the first set of country climate and development reports is that climate change poses a clear and present danger to our development objectives, and particularly the goal of eradicating extreme poverty. Poor countries and poor people in all countries are especially vulnerable. In the Sahel countries, for example, the poverty rate could increase from a 27% baseline to 34% by 2050 in a scenario assuming continued high global emissions. CCDRs argue that these impacts can be reduced drastically if we make climate adaptation and resilience an integral part of development. For example, today we should not build a new infrastructure asset without making sure it is designed for tomorrow's climate conditions. But even with good adaptation efforts, the world still needs rapid reduction in carbon emissions. And with more resources and much larger emissions per capita, high-income countries have to do more and more quickly. This will also give low-income countries more time to do their own transition toward low-carbon development. But eventually, all countries will need to shift to low-carbon development paths especially the largest emitters among middle-income countries. The good news out of our CCDRs is that countries can shift to low-carbon development without compromising their development. In countries where we have CCDRs, emissions can be reduced by 70% by 2050 without reducing economic growth. And in many countries, climate policies can even accelerate growth thanks to efficiency gains and better technologies. But for that to happen, a few key conditions need to be met. Policies need to be well designed. The private sector needs to play its part. Poor people need to be supported and protected to ensure a just transition. And affordable financing needs to be available. So what financing are we talking about? In CCDR countries, annual investment needs to boost resilience and reduce emissions average 1.4% of this country's GDP. This is achievable but countries will need to reallocate existing spending, mobilize domestic resources, and have access to affordable external financing. CCDRs make concrete recommendations to make sure the private sector can invest and contribute to these needs. In lower income countries though, needs are larger, often higher than 5% of their GDP. This is because these countries face large development gaps. Many people don't have access to electricity, water and sanitation, or decent housing. For these countries, much more support will be needed. This includes an increased amount of concessional finance with grants for lower income countries. 